My name is Peston. I live in Cape Town. And also, I do uh, delivery. Interbed helped me to realize my dreams. Now I have my own delivery vehicle and I'm able to do the removal in and around Cape Town. Hello racing fans and a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for uh, Wednesday the 10th of April. Well we race at Hollywood Betts Gravel, we're on the poly track and I trust that you're well. You are having a fair week thus far and are looking forward to this midweek race meeting. Eight races carded, there's some small fields so I suspect that the Hollywood Betts Punters Challenge competition will be popular and are joined by Ryan Radhakrishna for the preview of the show. And uh, just having a look at the race card. Maybe we can just touch on that uh, briefly, Ryle. It, it looks like, you know, small fields are the order of the day. So uh, this Hollywood Bet Punters Challenge competition, I mean, it's, it's proving to be something that uh, racing fans out there are getting very close to, if not winning. There's some smart people out there, Dees. And um, I think yesterday at Hollywood Bet Scottsdale, we had one player who uh, unfortunately close was, again. Close again was denied, uh, I think, a couple of weeks back at Hollywood Bet Scottsdale as well on two horses and one got scratched and then Shona Kirsty Ives didn't manage to win. But uh, the guys are, they're getting uh, stuck into it and um, a lot of them are being able to find some nice winners on the day. And uh, I think when you, when you have a look at uh, the card and... I think people just try to look at legs where they can find results and more often than not those results arrive and they and they proven to be spot on. Yeah, it looks like a card where it will be popular. Well, that is it. Uh, let's get straight into it for race number one and the time things will get underway is at 12.20, so 20 past 12. That will be race number one and at the time of recording uh, there are nine runners that are carded and uh, just... Uh, some uh, horses uh, that are in fixed odds of betting market in single figures, just as a guide at the time of recording, one at six to one, two at eight to one. Horse number four at seven to two, five is at nine to two, six at eight to one, Rael. And then we got the favorite here, number nine, doing time at 17 to 10. It can be tricky when you get these maiden handicap races uh, where the weights are spread. Uh, it's, a, it's a handicap, but of course, these horses are not winners. Um, the first leg of the bad pot, you know, I'm not surprised that the bookmakers or the fixed odds betting market have got this horse at the top of the betting boards, number nine, doing time at 17 to 10. Uh, but uh, you're going to have to be a brave man to take those odds. I think uh, players uh, and his supporters would have been uh, encouraged by his last start, Dees, when running third behind Bunting. But one must take into consideration that that was not a, a strong field and that Foreman hasn't held up to date. He was beaten one and a half lengths and he now comes into a maiden handicap with uh, 57 kgs on the back. And obviously the booking of Richard Furry will catch the eye. His form on the poly track read six starts for one second and, and one one fought. His form of the distance isn't too encouraging, two starts for one Fought. So maybe he's a runner that has found his form now and it could just be the right time to strike for the number nine doing time. But it is a very, very tricky start to the meeting these. I think that this is a, a very tough race and probably one of the tougher races on the card. And a race where I would advise punters to include as many as you possibly can because uh, I definitely believe that doing time is opposable. He's at 16 to 10. There's no value in that for a horse that has had 14 starts in the maidens and is yet to get it right. Perhaps the blinkers could just uh, do the trick with this uh, for your son of Time Thief, but um, it's hard to be confident on his chances. I must agree. Numbers three and five, Noble Warrior number five and number three, Cars met uh, about from the stable of Michael Roberts. I see he's got the claim for, so that's on a very low weight horse, number 351 and a half. Noble Warrior comes from a form line where Plattenberg has come out to win and Rachel will claim the one and a half. Then you've got Corne Spies, the visitor, who had a look at the polytrack last time out. Clinton Binder is in town. He's got Feather Dancer. It becomes complicated. So in summarizing, how many horses do you think you'll be pretty confident with in, in a bet like a bipod? <laughs> I think that's tricky. Um, okay, let's let, let's try with let's try with three numbers, and if we okay. double up, it'll be a bonus. We have to include the favourites. Okay, we can go with the nine. Um, which other horse would you go? To I'm going to go with the bottom weight, uh, fifty-one and a half, number, number three. three. Yeah. Okay, I'll I will throw in uh, this horse. Uh, 
let's go with the other Michael Roberts horse, uh, Noble Warrior. And perhaps he could uh, he could improve on his recent form. Yeah, one is at fourteen to one. Horse number three and number five is at nine to two. I think that's good back up there for the favourite. If that doesn't arrive in the top two, and you get uh, the Michael Roberts run, horses running into that exact position, I'm almost certain you'll drop a lot of tickets there in race number one. It's a tricky start. It looks like a trifecta quartet race, race number one. We get things away at 12.20. It's good fun. Days like these are, are great. You get the whole industry together. Um, and to have you know companies um, and corporations like Interbet and Cape Racing who are uh, so generous with um, sort of time and, um, and energy into into making a day like this possible is uh, it's it's fantastic for everyone.